Been tonight, Ann Coulter has a new column out today about the nuke situation in Japan, and here she is. The column is entitled, A Glowing Report on Radiation. Glowing radiation, very, very good. But you are not down on radiation poisoning. Well, it's not me. I'm citing a stunning number of physicists. And from the New York Times and the Times of London, there, there's a growing body of evidence that uh, radiation in excess of what the government uh, says is, are the minimum amount, amount you should be exposed to are actually good for you and reduce cases of cancer. We're good for you and reduce cases of cancer. We're good for you and good for you and good for you and good for you and good for you. Silly cow. Well, who would have thought it? Anne Coulter opens her mouth on a scientific subject and ends up talking through her arsehole. A particularly fragrant concoction this time revolves around the risks of excess radiation, with some added musty sense of how the Japanese are trying to kill Americans again and how the government types are lying to us. Now I've done some research on radiation risks as part of my training in my line of work, since what I'm essentially doing is pointing radiation at unwitting members of the population and pressing the big shiny cancer roulette button. It's something that's taken pretty seriously, and so, like the oversized red biro that I am, I'm going to give Anne a few corrections. Let's start with the actual article itself on foxnews.com, Anne's glowing report on radiation. Glowing radiation, very, very good. And... Okay, what the fuck? Is this picture really necessary or indeed relevant in any way other than pleasing the hardcore conservatives with their favourite blonde plus some America fuck yeah? You can almost hear Glenn Beck fapping himself into an early grave. With that in mind, fuck this website, let's go to a perhaps less offensive setting for the full article. AnnCoulter.com, oh my fuck. I'm citing a stunning number of physicists. No, Anne, you're not. From the New York Times. And the there we go. Anne is in fact citing some old articles on radiation, which themselves cite actual scientists. And this laziness has inevitably led to a few inconsistencies. Oh, and by inconsistencies, what I mean to say is Miss Coulter is outright misrepresenting both the articles and the scientists involved in order to present a story more one-sided than Stephen Fry taking on a lampshade in a pub quiz. The first batch of Fox News fair and balanced cherry picking comes from the November 27th, 2001 edition of the New York Times, so let's have a closer look at the snippets Coulter has selected. The first study brought up refers to lung cancer risk for patients undergoing frequent chest x-rays during treatment for tuberculosis. The most likely paper being referred to is this one from 1995. The paper concludes that the risk of these low doses is actually lower than current risk models would predict for these patients. How does the New York Times state this? Fewer cases than would be expected. And how does Anne put it? Much lower rates than the general population. Let's put this mistake into some sort of perspective, some metaphorical analogy to help us visualise the situation. Imagine some lovely wooded parkland with some lovely bunny rabbits running around freely. Now there are some foxes running around too, and every so often a rabbit is subjected to an untimely demise at the jaws of one such furry ginger bastard. We'll call this group the general population. There's another group we'll call Medical experiments involving the direct application of foxes to rabbits in the face. Now in this group, current models will predict a certain percentage of these rabbits would get eaten the shit out of. However, this study found that actually a lower number of rabbits fell to the ginger assailants than this prediction. We can, however, be assured that there's still a greater chance of having your rabbit neck snapped in this group than the general population, because they're throwing foxes at their fucking faces by which I mean firing radiation at their ample, perfectly rounded, juicy, all-round great set of lungs. Thousands of papers address the risks between the general population and those under more frequent medical radiation exposure, including a few by the same author as this study, and none of them come out asking if you want some plutonium with your bloody chips. The second claim Anne makes refers to some shipyard workers, some of which were exposed to 10 times as much radiation, but had a 25% lower cancer mortality rate than the others. Now the study by the US Department of Energy confirms what Anne has said. The radiation exposed workers had lower mortality rates than the other workers and the general population. We should assume here that Anne has forgotten about the government conspiracy to lie to us about radiation. Radiation in excess of what the government um, says is are the minimum amount, amount right. you should be exposed to. When she's citing a government source as evidence. Either way, it's difficult to track down an actual scientific paper detailing the study, i.e. one with methods, references and shiny graphs. Any other papers referencing it reference the government report directly, so it's difficult to really gain anything from this study. But as the New York Times stated, of course ignored by Anne, this and other studies were subject to some statistical flaws in their methods and analysis. 
In fact, the Department of Energy itself has been criticised directly in relation to its reports with regards to low doses of radiation. But this is a can of worms we'll open later. I'll keep it over here in the corner so we don't forget. Next in Coulter's list of ripe, juicy, fresh-picked cherries is a study of some apartment buildings in Taiwan that were contaminated with the radioactive cobalt-60. The study, as Anne gleefully recites, claimed that the inhabitants of these buildings ended up with an arse-shattering 96% lower incidence of cancer. But before you all start smearing cobalt on your face, we must consider what the bad guy from Mortal Kombat has to say on the issue. End this now. How dare you bring for death! Only victors are granted their desire. There's a fate worse than death. The cobalt mines of Shokan. An eternity of pain and suffering. So radioactive cobalt is bad then? Let's have a look at a later study on the same population irradiated in the apartments. Only this time they took into account the age and gender of the individuals, which the first study failed to do. A big flaw considering that on average the occupants were far younger than the general population, and so cancer incidence would be lower anyway. This study found 141 cancers, compared to the 5 found in the first study. Needless to say, this later study concludes with a higher risk of cancer based on the high radiation doses. And finally we have... The coolest cat in my column is this Bernard Cohen at the University of Pittsburgh. He did a study of... He apparently found a link between areas of the US affected by high radon radiation exposure with decreased rates of lung cancer. Cohen is adamant that his study is valid and no other factors account for the correlation. He's even confirmed that Anne's comments regarding his work are accurate. However, several other authors have questioned his work, mainly around the link between lung cancer and heavy smoking, feeling that Cohen didn't take this into account. This particular argument has gone back and forth more than Charlie Sheen's career options. So considering how much religious conservatives enjoy teaching the controversy with regards to all things big bangy and evolutiony, here we have Anne reporting on an actual, real-life, genuine scientific debate, and yet the wicked witch of the right wing manages to utterly ignore the other side. But before we get too carried away, and with that can still jiggling maniacally in the corner there, it'll be worth taking some time to look at the actual issue being raised with regards to radiation risks. Why is radiation dangerous? Ionizing radiation is basically the emission of a particle, like an alpha or beta particle, or a high-energy photon in the case of X-rays and gamma rays. Basically, they like nothing more than breaking into your home and kicking your dog in the scrotum. If your dog's scrotum happens to be a tenuous metaphor for cellular molecules being disrupted, producing free radicals which go on to affect other structures including DNA within the cell nucleus, and we'll assume that it is, then radiation has a chance to damage your DNA. If this damage results in the cell cycle going apeshit like a cursed horcrux... That's it. Up there. They've added the Gemino curse. Everything you touch will multiply. Then this terrible acting has led to a rather cancerous problem. Any single particle can cause this cascade to occur. It's a matter of probability, and throw enough radioactive dice at the board and the board will likely suffer as a result. It's termed a stochastic effect, meaning that the outcome is only linked to the dose given in terms of probability of occurrence and not the severity of the effect. Rolling a 6 will give you cancer, and if you throw a 100 dice and get a 6, well, you still get the same cancer, but it's a hell of a lot more likely. There are deterministic effects with radiation too, meaning that the dose directly corresponds to the severity of the effect, and this isn't down to chance. Poke a man with a stick and he'll be moderately annoyed, poke him with the 815 from Waterloo and he'll be a thin paste. With radiation, specific levels are linked to definite outcomes. Skin burns, infertility, fatal poisoning, etc, etc, etc. So what does all this mean, practically speaking? Well, for the medical and nuclear power industries, it means tight regulations for radiation safety for both workers and the public. This relates to disposal of radioactive substances, the ridiculous lead coats I get to wear sometimes, how thick the doors to the x-ray room are, and plenty more. So when you're in the radiology department to check your broken foot, don't be surprised when the radiographer politely informs you that they cannot also x-ray your gammy knee no matter how much you plead without a written request form from a doctor. The can, however, as yet remains undisturbed, bar my vague hints. It's got a lot to do with this graph we've already seen, and specifically, this bit here. In part two, we'll finally reveal these wormy contents, and as unimportant as Anne Coulter's opinions actually are, we'll give her a few more good kicks in the scrotum as well. You are forever known as outcast. Failure. Failure! 